All right. Welcome, Blue Savages. Today we're gonna make a U.S. flag animation, and we'll throw some music in there, some of them hot beats. All right. Y'all ready for this? Before Happy uh, Fourth of July, everybody. All right. Let's start a new one here. Let me save this one. Bam. All right. So flag. Yeah. Think about the shape. A flag is obviously the shape of. What is the flag the shape of? Of all the shapes we have in Blender, it's not a cube. It's more the shape of a plane, a good old plane. That's what I was looking for. Bam. So we're going to delete the cube here. X here, delete key to delete the cube. And we're going to bring in a mesh plane. The shift A, mesh plane. There we go. That's the plane right there. A little flat, all right? So I need to stand it up. So I'm in R. X, 9, 0, enter. R for rotate, X for uh, snap the rotation to the X axis. That way it rotates along the X axis, that red line as you can see. And 90 for 90 degrees, then enter to commit to that. All right, uh, but a little flag, the United States flag is not a square shape. It's more a rectangular shape, right? So let's make it a little longer. Let's uh, scale it along the X axis, the red line right there. It's gonna be S, X, 1.5, enter. All right, there we go, a little longer. It's looking more like the US flag. All right, so we're gonna use the uh, simulation over here. Uh, cloth, cloth simulation. So it's gonna bend. It's gonna be all wavy, just like cloth. But for us to do that, we need the geometry for it. Cause right now we just have four vertices and these four edges here on one face. So we need to break it up into smaller faces, smaller vertices, add a bunch of edges in here. So it bends along that. Cause that's, that's what's gonna use to bend all the uh, geometry on it. So I'm gonna take it to edit mode, tab key for edit mode. I'm gonna subdivide the whole thing here. I'm gonna right click it and select subdivide right there, bam. And then immediately go down here, there's a subdivide menu, contextual modular menu down here. Uh, click on it. And this is random of, uh, sorry, number of cuts, number of cuts. Uh, the higher the number, the better. If your computer can, for, can um, support 100 cuts, go with that. But uh, most computers might not be able to support that. I got a feeling my, mine uh, might start to slow down. Just to play it safe, I'm gonna go down to 60. There you go, 60, still lots of faces there. Uh, if you go down here to the lower right, it tells you how many vertices you have. So uh, 3,844 vertices selected out of 300, sorry, 3,844. Edges, 7,000, 7.5, and faces, uh, 3.7. 3,721 right there. See if I click one here, there's one vertex. I have one vertex selected out of all these, no edges, no faces. So I just have one vertex selected. All right, cool. So there's my flag there. Let me hit one for front view. Uh, this flag, if I were to simulate it, so let me show you right now. Tab key, I'm hit the play button. It's gonna fall down and it's gonna keep falling. I'll pause that, back to frame one. And get rid of that, back to edit mode. So I wanted to uh, snap to something. I wanted to grab something. So I'm gonna drag select the left side right here. Just this edge right here. Just that one edge right there, there we go. I'm gonna convert this into a vertex root. And I'm gonna name it pin so it pins to this. That way it doesn't fall all the way down. Another way of selecting this edge here is holding down the alternate key and click on a vertical edge. Left click the vertical edge and you'll create a loop selection, see? You gotta make sure you get the edge. If you get the vertex, it's hit or miss. You might get a different, different edge, see? You want this one to get the edge itself. There we go. All right, so got that edge there selected. And I want to make that my uh, my pin, my pin group. So it's going to hold it up. So I'm going to go over here to the properties panel. And I'm going to click on mesh data right here, object data. It's that upside down triangle. If I had the camera selected, that icon would be a camera. If I had the light, that icon would be the light. Uh, light. Vertex group. All right, I'm going to create a group out of this. I'm going to hit the plus sign right here, vertex group. I'm going to click assign. Boom, it just assigned the name of this group here, which is group, to that group right there. I'm gonna rename it. I'm gonna double click in there. I'm gonna call it pin. There you go. Uh, the only importance of the name is that you know what it is. It's uh, something descriptive. So I know that's gonna be my pin there. If you like, you can actually just make uh, this object here, sorry, this vertex and this vertex down here. Oops, I had the caps lock. Just these two uh, vertices, you can make those a pin. But I'm just gonna pin the whole left side, but you might get a, a better, uh, Render if you just pin those two at the end there, but I'm gonna go with the whole thing. 
I'm not going to hit a sign because then if I hit a sign, it's going to assign those new ones there. So I'm going to click select. It'll select those. There you go. Cool. Just to double check. So if I click away, that one's selected. If I click on select, it's going to select my pin group. There we go. My vertex group name pin. All right, tab key for object mode. Now I'm going to go over here to the simulation. Cloth. Hit the play button. See how it breaks. And oops, falling down. So I need to add the pin in there. So I'm going to scroll through here. Scrolling, scrolling, open shape. There it is, pin group. I'm going to click in here and select pin. Hey, I could have named it something else. It still would work. I'm at the play button. There we go. See, it's caught on there. All right. So it looks a little pixelated. Doesn't look too neat. We'll fix that in a bit. I'm going to pause it. Go back to uh, frame one. I'm going to go to the UV editor over here. And I'm going to bring in a flag to put in here the US flag. So to do that, I'm going to get a free flag. I'm going to go to wikipedia.org and they have a US flag right there that's free. If you just do a Google search for US flag, it'll give you the result from uh, Wikipedia. Boom, flag of the United States. Click on that one there. Take me to Wikipedia. There we go, it's Wikipedia. I'm go to the Wikipedia page. So I get a, there's a bigger image here. There's this one, I'm going to click on it. And you get this big image right here. If you click on this download button, that'll download a picture of the flag, but it's an SVG file. You can't use that file in Blender here for UV mapping. It's not compatible. It's not going to work. Uh, you're going to want to get a JPEG or a PNG. So to do that, I'm just going to right-click this flag here. Save image as. The cool thing in this, uh, this image of the US flag is... Uh, it's, uh, it's that word... So the PNG file on the desktop. I'm going to save it on the desktop. Save. Public domain. There we go. Public domain. That's what I was looking for. It's in the public domain, so you can use this uh, however you like. All right, back over to Blender. I downloaded that, um, that picture, saved it on the desktop. If you just leave it on the downloads folder, you're not going to be able to bring it into Blender. If it's just downloaded and it's right there, I know it might be on the desktop. It's just there as a, as a shortcut. But if it's not on your desktop, you can just hold it here. Hold it down and drag it to the desktop. Notice I resized my window. So I already have a file with that name there. Cancel. And that was the one I saved there. All right. So I want to bring in the flag here. I want to be able to see it. So I'm going to click on rendered right here. That way you can see my materials that apply. You can also hit the Z key, Z for zebra, and select rendered. Make sure your mouse is on this side, on this one over here. 3D view port and UV editor over there. So I'm going to click on materials right here. Now I'm going to click on new, create a new material. Cool. All right. So I'm not going to use a color. I'm going to use an image. So I'm going to click on the little river here to the right of base color. And I get this pop up menu and I'm going to go to image texture. There we go. And I'm going to click on open. I'm going to look for that image. It's on my desktop. So I'm going to click on desktop here. There we go. I'll scroll through here. And there it is right there today. Double click it open. And there it is. Boom. All right. I can bring it in over here too, but I don't really need to. It's already there on my on my flag here. Uh, to verify, I can go up here to layout and switch over to rendered, and it should be there. There it is, bam! There's my US flag, Burka. Play button. There we go. It's going down. So we'll fix the pixelation right now. So you can just right click it, select shade smooth. Should look a little smoother. Pause it back to frame one. All right, now I'm gonna look at the instructions, see what I gotta do next. That's what I'm gonna do. Rendered physics pin group. Oh, self collision. Cool. So we're in the physics tab. Activate self collision. Collision's right here. That way it doesn't go inside of itself. Self collision right there because right now it, uh, it folds inside itself. If we don't want that, we want it to collide against it like if it was actual fabric. So self-collision, that'll collide against itself. It's still going to fold like that. You know, it folds a little different. There we go. You can see those wrinkles there. But we don't want it staying down. So instead, we're going to do, we're going to bring in a fan. We're going to blow it so it stays up. See, it just, swing, it just swings down there, staying down there. We don't want that. We don't want the sad flag. So I'm going to hit Shift-A. 
I'm going to go down here to force field. I'm going to bring in some air. Force field. Uh, sorry, wind. It's called wind. Wind. There we go. It's like a fan. Everything's going slow right now because I hit the play button. It's trying to render all this. So if you're experiencing this, just pause it. All right. I'm going to rotate this. I think 45 degrees. If I can position it um, next to my flag here. Yeah, 45 degrees. R, 45 enter. This is in front view, by the way. One from front view. If not, you'd have to hit R, Y, 45 enter. R, X, minus 2 enter. All right. Sorry, G, X. G for grab, X, minus 2 enter. Let's move it over by two blender units in the minus direction there. And then bring it down by one blender unit. G, Z, minus 1 enter. There we go. Go back over here to the frame one. There, that's a good angle right there. It's going to shoot out, right? Here in the properties panel, now I have the force field settings. So the strength, I'm going to jack it up really high. I want it to be strong. So 5,000. Three, enter. And then the noise amount, it's kind of like turbulence. So it's kind of wavy. Uh, 10. We're going to go with 10 right here. And then shape. That's how it shoots out. Let's go with the tube. All right. So I'm going to hit the play button. All right, it's going to fall down first, and then later the air is going to blow it back up in a bit. Let's let it play. There we go. And then the air is going to shoot it up. And here comes the air blowing it back up. There we go. Earlier it was staying down there. Now it's going back up thanks to the air. If you want it to stay up, you don't want it to start it with it going down. You want it to stay up. Go ahead and click your flag. And then in here, you're going to go over to make sure in physics tab and look for simulation start. It's going to be under cache, cache right here. Right now, our simulation starts at frame one. Just have it start uh, before that. So let's go with minus 100. And so at frame minus 100, it's going to be droopy. And our actual animation starts at frame 1, but by the time it gets to frame 1, it, the simulation has already started, so it won't start droopy. So let me pause it here and go back to frame 1, and I'll show you guys here. All right, play button. Uh, come on, come on. No, it's not doing it right now. we got to do the bake. So we'll do the bake later. Uh, for now, as you can see here, your flag looks uh, kind of shiny. It's going to look even shinier later, and I'll show you how to fix that in a bit. It's a super easy fix. All right, so I'm pause that. Oh, yeah, you know, we can bake it already. I'm going to click on Bake, and it's going to record all this information here. It's going to store it in a cache. That way it doesn't have to keep rendering over and over. It's not going to slow down the computer. So you just hit Bake, and then wait a moment. And while it's baking, we're going to go and download an HCRI file. That's going to be our background file, so we can have a cool background picture here. We're going to go to hcrihaven.com. These free images here, free HRI files from HCRI Haven. All right, so I'm going to go to HCRIs here. And I want a nice, cool sky background. Skies. The one you guys saw earlier at the beginning is this one right here, sunflowers, sunflower field. I like that one because it has a lot of clouds. It's not just a blue sky. This one has a lot of clouds as well. That one has a lot of clouds. I don't like the floor on that one. Skies, I don't like the floor. But um, we can move around, play around the settings so you don't see the floor. This one looks cool. I like the floor on that one, but I want more clouds. Uh, some of these pictures you might have noticed, these are mostly in Europe. There's the three guys that made this website. They're all European, and they're the ones that upload all the pictures. Cool, nice sunset scene right there. That's not the United States, though, and neither are these other ones. This one looks cute. I'm going to go with this one right here. I'm going to click on this one. All right. And then scroll down. There's different uh, files I can download. They're the same one. They're just higher quality. The higher the number, the higher the quality. Um, I've been using 4K. They've been fine. 16K is going to be great, but it's going to make your file bigger. So I'm going to go with 4K here. At the download. All right. It's still baking. I can see down here as a little progress bar. 63%. So in the meantime, I'm going to download a song. The Star Spangled Banner, that song is also in the public domain. And you can get it from the YouTube Audio Library. YouTube.
youtube.com forward slash audio library forward slash music. So that's the site right there. Also, um, if you don't have a Google account, go ahead and create one so you can log in and download this stuff. If we promise you to log in, go ahead and log into your Google or YouTube account and you can download the music. Also, uh, YouTube is owned by Google, so your Google account, if you have a Google account, guess what? You have a YouTube account. All right, so these songs here are uh, royalty free. You don't got to pay anybody to use them. But sometimes I do have to give an attribution to them, to whoever wrote the song. They just ask for a little shout out. Got to give them some credit. Uh, none of these got that right here. Sometimes you'll find something like that. You find different artists. Uh, well, anyways, the Star Spangled Banner has been around for what, like 200 years? Star Spangled Search. All right, so here's uh, some performed by the U.S. Army Band, uh, the United States Marine Band, and Cooper Canal. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's listen to them. I like uh, this one right here. This one is just the music. So the lyrics. All right, and if you want to download it, go over to the far right. There's a download button there. You've seen arrow pointing down. Usually that means download. You can download it from the internet. All right, so by default, that's going to download into my downloads folder. I cannot access my downloads folder in Blender, so I got to put this on the desktop or inside a project folder. So let me resize my window here. All right, I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the desktop there. All right, there it is. I already had one down there earlier. So back over to Blender. Here we go. There's my flag waving. Uh, the bake is done. So now when it starts at frame one, it uh, stays in the air. It's not drooping down. Because the droop down is happening, um, starts over at minus 100. All right, so I want to insert the song in here and the HDRI file. So first, I think I'll do the uh, HDRI file. So I'm going to go over here, click on the world icon. And then the color, this color here, that's the color of the background. I don't want that. I want to bring in that HDRI file. Cool 360 camera uh, picture. So I'm going to click on the ribbon here. And go to environment texture, environment. I'm going to create this little environment here, environment texture. And then I'm going to click on open. And then I'm going to look for that file. I know it's on my desktop. I have a bunch of stuff on my desktop, as you can see. And it's uh, not that one. That's the picture of the US flag. It's going to be the one in HDR. So that's a Sunflower one from another project when I was uh, warming up for this one. The one I just downloaded. I already forgot what it was called. Let me see. Delta, Delta 2. All right, so Delta 2, look for the HDRIs, HDR, Delta 2, HDR, and where is that file at? What? They modified. And let's see, here we go. And that file's not there. Did it not go to the desktop? Oh, let's try to put it on the desktop. I don't think it went on the desktop. All right, so hold it down and drag it to the desktop. Put it there. So now it should pop up in Blender. Not this window here. All right. Well, I can't find it, so I'm gonna go with um, what sunflowers right here. So I couldn't find it. There's another one that's on there as well. And give it like a good second to load. There it is. Load it in. There's my flag looking very reflective. So I'm going to go over here to materials. And the material there is this uh, this picture of the US flag. I'm going to scroll down. The roughness right now is uh, 0.5. If I bring it down, it's going to be even shinier. So it reduces all the roughness. There you go. It looks horrible. Well, it looks like it's wet or something. So I'm going to bring down the roughness all the way to 1, make it dull. And now it's not reflective. See, there we go. All right, so it looks very thin. I want to make it a little thicker. So I'm going to go over here to modifier. And I'm going to add a mo modify modifier. I'm going to click on add modifier. And I'm going to bring in solidify. Solidify will thicken up your mesh. Solidify. There we go. So just by bringing it in already, I already thickened it up a bit. I can see it right, right there. You can see that nice strong edge right there. It's at the point zero 0.01. I'm going to bring it up to 0 0.015. 0 0.015, a little thicker than that. There we go. So I like that. Uh, you can click these arrows here and then you go even more. 
I want too thick. That's just a little too crazy there. 0 0.015 seems to be a good number for me. Yeah, you could also leave it at 0 0.01. That's a good one as well. Um, I'm not going to apply. Just as a rule of thumb, I, I leave those alone uh, in case I want to go back and make some changes. All right. Let's hit the play button here. So all I need is the music. I just need the music. All right. So for the music, I'm going to change my editor type here. I'm going to pause this. Right now I'm in the 3D viewport here. I'm going to click right here on the 3D viewport icon. The editor type looks like a picnic table. It's supposed to be a grid with the sphere. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go over to video sequencer. Video sequencer right here. Video sequencer. With the little clapper. Take one. Cool. Make sure you go to frame one. We're going to bring in the song. And wherever your timeline cursor here, your playhead, whatever you want to call that, your timeline cursor, wherever it's at, it'll appear in front of it. So I'm going to go over to frame one. So it starts at the beginning. There we go. Have my mouse inside this window here. I can click the add button here or use a shortcut shift A and go down to sound. All right. And that song is on my desktop. So desktop here. And I can bring any song I have on my computer. And here I have the Star Spangled Banner. So I'm going to double click it in. And there it is. I hit the play button and it should play the song. All right. So I'm going to go back over the. Uh, default 3d viewport if i click on this one it's not going to go back because that is the uh, default viewport oh does he want to go to that one there we go so i just got to change this one right here so i'm going to click on the editor tab right here and 3d viewport there we go back to normal here we go play button i want to choose a uh, an angle for my camera so i'm holding down the middle mouse button i can choose here um, what looks like a good view I can make this on a camera view. Right now, if it's zero on the number pad, it's looking down on it. it. Looks like it's on the floor. I don't want that. What is that growing over there? Dandelions. Cool. Uh, Soundflowers back there. You guys can also download this file from HRI Haven. It's the one called Sunflowers. Looks like uh, you see this road in a field. All right. And I want some clouds. Maybe I want that horizon there. Or do I want that horizon? I like this one a little better here. So we're make it look like I'm looking up at it. Control to zero. Boom, a new camera view there. If I want some of that horizon, like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna click on my camera here. Click on the camera frame. I can also select the camera from here. I'm at GZ, and I'm gonna pull it down and, and do the trick. So instead, I'm gonna rotate it. Let's see. So this is the Y axis here. That means one from front view. There you go, so I'm gonna make this a camera view instead. Control to zero. There we go. Now I'm gonna hit R, X. Rotate it so I'm looking up at it. Left click and then GZ, bring it down. There we go. If I want some of that over there, I guess I can do uh, RZ. Shoot it over there. There we go. I'm going to say G for grab and move over to the left. And left click about there. I hit the play button. I got my flag in there. Uh, let's see you want to use a rule of thirds. You can click on your camera over in the uh, camera icon. Sorry, properties panel. Click on camera data, object data. And check out viewport display. And there's an option here for uh, thirds. There it is. So open viewport display then open composition guides and click on thirds. And then you can take advantage of this here. So I'm going to hit GZ. And nope. Oh, hit G for grab. Pull it down. Oh, no, no, no. Let's see. RX. Try to get the horizon there. There we go. R again. There we go. G for grab. Pull it up. And there we go. So I got the horizon there on that bottom third. Back to frame one. Play button. Bam. There you go. So to render this out, I'm gonna go to here to render, and you don't gotta worry about this fan. It's not gonna be visible or these rule of thirds. Uh, what you do want to get rid of is this light right here. That's gonna conflict with the HDRI file there. That's another light source. The HDRI file has its own light. So I'm gonna select that light there. You can't find it. Select it here on the outliner. Move the mouse over here. Execute delete. There we go. It's gone. Uh, add some motion blur in there. Gloom is not really necessary. I don't got any glowing lights in there. Yeah, activated. It looks a little fuzzy now. 
which got ambient occlusion. Here I go with the ambient occlusion. Bloom, that fuzzy, fuzziness, not too bad. I'm going to take it off. All right, so I'm going to go with down output. And I can um, actually choose what frames I want to render. Let me start at frame one. Then it starts to get a little droopy over here somewhere. There it is. I don't want those. I don't want those droopy ones. Let me see where it starts to get droopy. 70, 150, 140. All right, 120 looks good there. I go 130. I'm going to go up to 120. So in here, frame start and end, I can change these. Same ones as down here. If I change the end to 120, and I'll render frames 1 and 120. So you can see there, change that are 120. It also cut these down. I can render more frames. I can render it so it's the whole song. Let's see how many frames is the whole song. Uh, movie Clip Editor. Oops, not Movie Clip Editor. Uh, video Sequencer. And I can go way out here and see how far this goes. All right, frame, whatever number that is. Freaking humongous number. I don't got a calculator for that one, but I can um, I can make make it be that far. I can keep increasing this until I get the the frames to get there. There we go. See, I went over. So we're at two thousand. There you go. And then you can sequence the whole song in your animation. But that's gonna take a while to render. So uh, almost 2,000 frames, it's crazy. I think I was going up to 120, there we go. And back over here to the 3D viewport. Cool, all right. So to have the audio in there, I have to go down here to file type, file format for PNG. Usually I go with AVI JPEG. Uh, raw is just like AVI JPEG, except it's higher quality, but it takes longer to render. But for the music, for the audio codec, I'm going to have to go with the FFmpeg video. And then open encoding down here. Scroll down. For your audio, audio codec. From the audio, you got to change it to AAC. And that way it'll render with the music in your animation. I'm going to click on the folder here. Give it a name and a location. So desktop, uh, US flag for YouTube. There we go. Accept. Boom, control F12, and then wait patiently. So depending on computer power, computing power, it might take a while. Also depends on how many of the subdivisions you have. So more subdivisions are gonna take longer. So let's wait it out here. So thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. USA all day, every day though.